The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line.
The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Read my voice on the screen. Please confirm to me, guys. All of you read my voice on the screen. Those are attending in online. Guys, please check it. All of you read my voice on the screen. Yeah. All right. Good morning, guys. All right, sir. I think so. People are still enjoying their uh, festival, uh, not coming full strength. And uh, on a small announcement to all of you guys, I said to you after a few days, I want to take your sessions at eight thirty. I think I said to you a number of times, right? Now the time is coming for us. And now uh, listen, first listen carefully. Monday onwards. Monday onwards, you have to attend our classes 8.30, 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Okay, listen carefully. On this particular day, I am going to start a new topic that will be object orientation. Oops, don't worry. Everybody can understand. Everybody can start Java with oops. So you can attend that then you may have one doubt sir it's okay monday onwards you are saying like this that's okay but what about our present topic are you going to skip this present topic uh, will you skip this present topic no in durga soft especially in my classes no skipping on any topic even though if i take more time to complete it every topic as per the words everything we are going to be completed no second thought of it. So skippings are not going to be available. So what I am telling there, up to 15 days of time, up to 15 days of time, we have to attend uh, your regular class, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. also parallelly. Understand my point here? So your 10 to 11.30 class is going on next 15 days of time. By that, up to language fundamentals, I will complete Monday onwards. Monday onwards, you have to attend our classes right from 8.30 to 10. That means 8.30 to 10, one separate slot I will take. After completion of 8.30 to 10, I will give 10 to 15 minutes break. That means you can expect it by 10.15, I will start your class there. 10 to 15 minutes break I will give. Then after that, I will take uh, 10 to 15 to 11.30 a.m. parallelly that classes. These classes are going on. 10 to 15 to 11.30 a.m. class are going on next to 15 days of time. But 8.30 to 10 is our permanent time. Monday onwards, we are going to start object orientation. Guys, all of you are getting clarity what I am telling to you. Do you have any confusion? Don't get any confusion. I will take care of everything. No to worry for this. This is one point. Next, as I said to you previously, yesterday you took a gap, right? Yesterday you took some holiday. Am I right or not? So, as per this, as per this, I want to take your class on the Sunday also. The same continuation of this 10 o'clock class, I will take on the Sunday also. Or else, on Sunday, I will take a special class. I will take a special class, somewhat extra session I want to take. I will complete one topic there. Anyway, don't worry for it. I'll plan for it, but you have to come for the class as usual, as per our schedule. Understand it, what I'm telling to you? Right. So, today we are taking this class. Tomorrow, at what time we have to come? Tomorrow, at what time we have to come? 10 o'clock. Day after tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Sunday, 10 o'clock. Monday, 8.30 to 10 and 10.15 to 11.30. Continuation up to 15 days, same schedule. After 15 days, only 8.30 to 10. No class at 10 15. Why? Because 10 o'clock class I am going to complete. What are the topics we started there? The topics I am going to be completed. Then continuation we are able to get totally 8.30 to 10. This is a small change in our schedule. So apart from this, we don't have any other changes. No. The total information we are going to understand effectively. Guys, all of you are getting it now. No response, guys. 
right that's fine now <clears throat> so this is a schedule even for both online and as well as offline students for both of them this is a schedule right for online students monday class link 8 30 to 10 o'clock link will be provided through mail by monday morning check your mail if you are not receiving any uh, new link mail no then try to contact with our office bhavan will be the responsible person and she will take care about these links and everything and she will she will provide that link information to you immediately okay but today tomorrow day after tomorrow up to sunday you have to come at 10 15 to 11 30 same link okay object orientation i am going to start at 8 30 to 10 monday onwards no parallel to parallel to this topic parallel to this first application development and parallel to language fundamentals you are going to see object orientation leave that option to me i will teach that content how, how to teach how to give more content to you then i will take care about it which topic i have to start and which topic i have to end i will take care about it. don't worry for it so parallel to language fundamentals you are going to understand object orientation no need to worry for it up to this sunday this sunday we are going to have somewhat extra session not like a one hour one hour one and a four session i will take at least some some extra session i will plan there so that you will complete more more content right sir leave this punch card right guys one more thing if any of your new members today if any of you are coming for new members today don't worry differences between java and others the topic is completed i will give videos of the topic don't worry just it is a matter of uh, five or six uh, classes no nearly nine differences i completed five or six classes i will give that videos to you so that you can watch every class is being recorded and every class video will be provided to you i'll i'll give that videos you know outside harsha is a person is available just you can talk with the harsha he will provide that videos recordings to you up to this what we completed no today onwards you can think it is a first class and fresh content here no? all right sir that's okay fine right sir one minute sir okay fine let's subject this clearly vibras and vibras joshi vidras joshi then i will talk with you later on after completion of this class i will talk with you let me start our content first of all all right i'll talk with you later on. don't worry huh. come on guys now the new topic today is like what there java features java features <clears throat> so already we completed differences between java and others uh, can you list out what are the various differences we completed in the difference between Java and others, can you list out them? First one is watch. C and C++ are static programming languages, but Java is watch dynamic programming language. Next one is watch. Preprocessor is required in C and C++, but preprocessor is not required in a Java. Next one is watch. What next one here? No. C and C++ are platform dependent, whereas Java is watch platform independent programming language. And then what next one here? Pointers are existed in C and C++, but pointers are not available in Java. Next one is watch. Tell me, up multiple inheritances are not possible in Java, but multiple inheritances exist in C++ and Python. Okay, leave it. Next one. Destructors are required in C++, but destructors are not required in Java. Operator overloading is not possible in Java, but it may be exist in some other programming languages. Next one is what there. Call by value and call by reference is possible in C and C++, but call by value is only be possible. In a Java. And then what next one here? In a C and C integers will take two bytes of memory and characters will take one byte of memory. But in Java, integers will take four bytes of memory and characters will take uh, two bytes of memory. That we understood. Only these points here we understood clearly. Right, sir. Now today the new topic is Java features. Good. I'm asking one question to all of you guys. Now try to answer for it. I want to take a, a new mobile phone the real i want to take a new mobile phone guys i have a tab but it is somewhat difficult for me to carry so i want to take a new mobile can you suggest me which phone is good nowadays but i don't like iphone no of course iphone is getting very good demand no in outside but i don't like it why because if i take any new phone with the technology the technology must be comfortable for me I should not learn anything new to use that uh, iPhone. Easiness I need to get. But if I take iPhone, what will happen? I have to learn something to use that phone. I may not be habituated for that. 
so I, I don't like this iPhone. Leave it. Then apart from that, which phone is good for me? Huh? Yes. Plus. One plus. Okay. One plus is good. Right. What is the latest version in the one plus? One plus 10T. 10T. Then where may be three variants are available. 8 GB RAM, 128. And 8 GB RAM, 256. 16 GB RAM, 256. Unfortunately, 8 GB RAM, 12 GB RAM are available in the stores. 16 GB RAM is not available in the stores. In online only, we have to purchase. But in OnePlus 10T, one more variant is available, but that is not released in India. That was released in China only. Then its memory capability is 16 GB RAM and 512 internal storage. No, not available. So I'm, I think I want to take that, but it is not available. So what I have to do? Anyway, guys, S22. S22 is okay, good, but not like OnePlus uh, processor. Processor point of view, OnePlus is very good. But S22, no. Ultra, S22 Ultra is a good. S22 Ultra is going on. Uh, okay, anyone, guys? I know very good information about mobile phones. Don't worry. I can speak anything. Okay, leave it. So, finally, my requirement is what? I want to take a mobile phone. New mobile phone I want to take. So, what I have to do if you want to take new mobile phone? No. First of all, we will go to the mobile shop. Where the shop representative is available for us. Shop representative is available there. I'll go there. I'll ask them. I'll ask them. I want to take a mobile phone. There I want to see YouTube videos for the sake of my Java. Any technology, technical related videos I want to see, YouTube videos I want to see. Maybe a bit images I want to take. Whenever I'm doing some classes there, I want to take some images like this for the sake of videos, for the sake of images. Moreover, when I identify any video sessions on Java or maybe any other new technology, I want to store them in my mobile phone. Whenever I'm free, I want to watch them. So this is my total requirement. Now, can you suggest me which phone is suggestible for me? He might be given information is okay. As per who says, OnePlus is good. OnePlus 10T is good. Okay. Then in OnePlus 10T also, 16 GB and 512 uh, internal storage, that is good. Better to take that. Then immediately I asked him, can you give some information about that OnePlus 10T? Can you give some details about that OnePlus 10T? Then immediately, see, observe carefully, this conversation is going on between me and the shopkeeper and the representative of that uh, mobile phone uh, in the shop between me and shopkeeper so far i have not taken that phone i have not seen the taste of that phone just this is a conversation before purchasing that mobile phone then immediately when i asked him give some information about this mobile phone immediately that shopkeeper the shop representative able to give the total information within five minutes or not so this phone this phone is having battery capability like what there 4000 something else and next one is like what there apart from this no dual sim and both the sims are nano sims only next one is like what their side camera wide camera depth camera like this we are able to have that one then uh, sensor how the sensor is going and face recognition or thumb recognition something else uh, then apart from this battery power next one is the storage internal memory and next one is like what the ram processor uh, Snapdragon is, I think, so recent version. This Snap, Snapdragon Generation 1. Okay. Is almost all Android 12 and 13. Maybe latest version is the 13 version there. Uh, then Oxygen OS is going on with the OnePlus. Uh, then apart from that, what next one can you know? So, like this, they're able to give. And one more phone might be it will come very soon from Motorola Moto X30 Pro. Uh, nearly 200 MP megapixel. Camera will come there. So when compared with that Moto X30, then what is the specialty of this OnePlus? Understand it now. So all this information about this mobile phone, he able to give within five minutes or not? Within five minutes, he might be given the total information of the total information of that phone within five minutes able to provide or not? Just it is a description of that particular mobile phone in a nutshell. Nutshell in the sense on a movement, on a glance. Just within five minutes, the total information of that product he explained to me. But I have not taken that phone. I have not seen the taste of that phone. Just I got some information about that particular mobile, particular product. 
can i say it's a trailer of the respective mobile phone or not if you go for movies now before releasing that movie actual movie they used to conduct some events in outside trailer events pre launch event in that pre launch event might be they might be prepared some bit a bit of that movie the two seconds or maybe two seconds or three minutes or four minutes on they they are able to play some bit by seeing the trailer also we can see the total nature of that particular movie so before taking mobile phone i got the total information of that mobile phone within 5 minutes similarly similarly before learning java if you want to know something about java what is java what is the nature of the java what exactly the features of the java what exactly the information about the java within 5 minutes if you want to know there we have to go for java features just java features topic is like what there it's a trailer part of the java programming language it will give clear cut information about the java what is the nature of the java what exactly the purpose of the java that information it able to provide so the point here what i am telling there to describe java programming language to describe java programming language java has given a set of features java has given a set of features called as java features that's it not more than that only to give information about java in a less time then we need to go for java features for example when we go to might be for the sake of this festival you might be went to your hometown as the festival you went to your hometown some of your friends might be or maybe your parents your parents might be asked to you what you are doing at present you may say i am doing course at durga soft which course java course tell me something about java one of your relative is working already in ibm he might be asked to you tell me something about java what you learn then at least you have to explain about java within 5 minutes or not of course you are unable to take your laptop you are unable to prepare our program there at least something we have to talk with your relative or not there we have to open our mouth as of now your knowledge is what when compared with the c and c++ where java is good that you know that you can explain but apart from that without touching c and c++ if you want to talk something about java minimum 1 hour if you want to talk about java there we have to go for like what there java features that's why i said to you to describe the nature of java programming language to describe the nature of java programming language to describe the nature of java programming language java has given a set of features called as java features now what are these features actually observe carefully java is a simple programming language very very simple programming language next one is java is an object oriented programming language third one is java is a platform independent programming language and fourth one is java is an architectural neutral programming language and the next one is a fifth one is like what there java is a portable programming language next one is java is a dynamic programming language and seventh one is java is a robust programming language and eighth one is java is like what there distributed programming language and the ninth one is java is a secure programming language tenth one is java is multi threaded programming language multi threaded programming language and the eleventh one is after this multi threaded java is an interpretive programming language and the twelfth one is java is a high performance programming language high performance if you are in our academics if you are in uh, btec final year or btec third year mca final year or if you are in academics if you have java is a one of the paper one of the subject there this question is a eight marks or six marks question write something about java features tell me what are the java features and describe the java features this might be one of the important question in our exams also but here itself i am telling to you nobody will ask any question on this particular java feature in your interviews again i am telling you this is for the sake of your knowledge but in our academics this may be one of the important question in our exams anyway whatever it may be as per our responsibility we have to understand about java that's why i'm talking about everything about this uh, particular topic
guys observe carefully now then here what we have to do there these many things are existed here try to understand these points clearly one by one one by one we are going to understand all the points okay simple programming language object oriented platform independent architectural neutral portable dynamic robust distributed secure multi threaded multi threaded interpretive and high performance and now here i am asking to you from these half of the features you know from this total 12 number of list so half of the features already we completed in the differences between java and others i completed half of the features uh, let me talk which features already you aware there of course simple programming language you know in very java history part i have given that again i will talk it today don't worry for it object orientation you know next one is what there platform independent we know architectural neutral also we know next one is dynamic you know portable you are not aware but information is very simple i'll give that but dynamic you know next one is what next one here we know there apart from this mm, okay then these these almost all five to six uh, features we know but we are going to understand at least one time one time like all these things you know remaining part i will explain to you with very much clarity uh, now try to understand this now first of all how can you say java is a simple programming language how can you say java is a simple programming language guys observe carefully how can you say java is a simple programming language observe carefully again i am telling to you uh, for example if i go to your parents if i ask to your parents what is the status of your child every mother except the fathers of course every mother i am not talking about father every mother she will say my child is innocent my child is very good will you get any other words from your mother no chances even though you are too worst uh, even though you are too wrong you are not in the proper track even though you are a rowdy in outside but your mother will say my child is innocent you don't know anything he was already filed with a case in the police station also even in front of judge also that mother will say my child is innocent my child is not having any uh, such kind of knowledge am i right or not huh? any doubt about it can i ask your mother okay fine listen carefully similarly if we go to any programming language provider c programming language provider java programming language provider python programming language provider Uh, some companies are providing this programming languages if i go to any programming language provider if i ask to that programming language providers what is your programming language every programming language provider will say the point is my programming language is very simple my programming language is very simple so if you ask to the c vendor c programming language provider what is your c programming language yes it is very simple programming language Java programming language vendor Sun Microsystems or Oracle Corporation, they will say Java is simple programming language. If you go for Python programming language provider, what is your Python? Python is very simple programming language. In their point of view, your programming language is simple. But as you are the learner, as you are the utilizer of these programming languages, no, you should know. You should know how C programming language is simple. What the definitions they are given. why java programming is language is simple what they have given reason for it and how python programming language is simple what they have given reason for it i would like to know all of you get my point or not so same way if you ask to the sun microsystems how your programming language is simple they might be given some reasons c programming language vendor might be giving some other reasons python programming language vendor might be giving some other reasons but no need to compare all these reasons they are their own definitions so as you are learning java as you are using java programming language but you should know how java programming language is very simple that point only here we have to understand so for that purpose java people have given three reasons to say java is a simple programming language to declare java is a simple programming language java programming language vendor has given three reasons what are the three reasons that java vendor has given there reason number 1 java applications guys all of you observe carefully java applications 
will take less execution time. See, this is the comparison with C and C++ only they are deciding. Not by comparing with any other programming language. By the time of introducing Java, that famous programming language are C and C++. Even Python is available by the starting point of the Java, but they are not compared with the Python. Python is not in a position to compare with Java by the time. It's totally outdated. It's totally down. Nobody is talking about Python by the time. But nowadays you are getting some more demand for Python. That's okay. Different story. But by the time of introducing Java, C and C++ are available. Just Java people have compared that Java with the C and C++. By that they are saying Java applications will take less execution time. Because of this reason, Java is a simple programming language. Next one. Apart from this, one more point. One more point. When compared with the C and C++, Java applications will take uh, less memory. Java applications will take what there? Less memory. Java applications will take what there? Less memory. Observe carefully what I'm telling to you. Next one, after that, you know already some points here. Java has removed all the confusion oriented features. All the confusion oriented features like what confusion oriented features? Tell me what next one you know pointers, comma, multiple inheritance, and so on from Java applications. For what purpose they know to make Java as a simple programming language? For what purpose they know to make Java as what there simple programming language? Okay, this is one point. Next one is what Java people has done another important thing. At the time of preparing Java programming language, they want to implement all the syntaxes which are very much simple when compared with other programming languages. For that, what they have done, they identified which syntaxes are simple in C and C. They maintain the same syntaxes inside the Java also. But which syntaxes are difficult, Java has not taken that syntaxes inside the Java programming language. So Java is using to make Java is simple. Java is using all the all the simplified syntaxes from C and C++. In other words, uh, other programming languages. Even I'm not saying C and C++ exactly. From other programming languages, which syntaxes are very much simple. That is syntaxes are implemented inside the Java. Nowadays, I'm telling to you some features are taken from Python also. Some syntaxes are taken from Python also. Nowadays, when Python is getting demand, Java is taking some inspiration from Python also, where some syntaxes are taken from Python also. That means taken from Python in the sense, Python programming language is not extended to Java. Identified which feature is important, that redesigned inside the Java in a Java style. Redesigned in Java in a Java style. So as a separate new feature that was provided, but that feature might be existed in the case of like what now? Previous. Just like Rajamouli direction. Rajamouli is copying some scenes from English movies or not. Similarly, Java people also doing the same thing. They copied, not as it is they are maintaining, just they copied the feature they copied, the functionality they understand, they are re-implementing the same functional inside the Java. That's it, guys. Now, anyway, then because of these reasons, we can conclude Java is a simple programming language. All of you guys, now tell me, whenever people are asking to you, how can you say Java is a simple programming language? How can you say Java is a simple programming language? If you are getting this question from anybody else, what is your response? You know, because of four reasons. What are the four reasons? You know, first one is what? Java applications will take less execution time. Java applications will take less memory. Java has removed all the confusion oriented features like pointers, multiple inheritance, and so on from Java applications. Java is using all the simplified syntaxes from other programming languages, not exactly C and C++ from other programming languages. Because of these reasons, we can conclude Java is a simple programming language. That's it. Only this information is sufficient. No need to talk too much internals of this. At this stage, this information is sufficient. Leave this one kid. Next one is after that, after that, object oriented programming language. After that, object oriented programming language. How can you say Java is an object oriented programming language? Number of times I discussed about this point. 
when a programming language is an object oriented programming language now tell me when a programming language is an object oriented programming language if any programming language allows its applications to represent data in the form of objects by following object oriented features then java is then the respective programming language is an object oriented programming language so i'm telling you clearly java is an object oriented programming language why because why because it allows its applications it allows its applications it allows its applications to represent data to represent data in the form of objects in the form of objects by following object oriented features what are these object oriented features you know you can understand class object encapsulation abstraction inheritance polymorphism message passing so these are the various object oriented features that's okay goes now this is the meaning of like what now object oriented programming language already aware about it then what next one you know observe carefully what next one you know platform independent well known by you now this 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 topic is very good information already discussed with you uh, what is the meaning of this uh, platform independent first of all tell me when a programming language is a platform independent programming language if any programming language allows its applications to perform compilation is on one operating system execution is on another operating system if any programming language allows its applications to perform compilation is on one operating system and execution is on another operating system then that programming language is called as platform independent programming language now i'm confirming to you clearly java is a platform independent programming language java is what a platform independent programming language how sir how can you say java is a platform independent programming language why because java allows its applications java allows its applications to perform compilation is on one operating system and execution is on another operating system that's my point here java is a platform independent programming language why because java allows its applications to perform compilation is on one operating system and execution is on another operating system because of this reason we can conclude java is like what there a platform independent programming language similarly in very first class i explained that but once again i'm telling to you architectural neutral first of all tell me guys when a programming language is an architectural neutral first of all what is the meaning of architecture architecture in the sense of hardware not any other one hardware previously operating system independent java is what there operating system independent previously but now i am telling to you java is a hardware independent java is also what there hardware independent that is the meaning of architectural neutral that means java allows its applications to perform compilation on one hardware architecture and execution is on another hardware architecture java doesn't have any bounding with a particular hardware architecture java can run its applications on any of the hardware architecture and so my point clearly so because of that reason we can understand java is what there hardware that means architectural neutral programming language java is an architectural neutral programming language why because java allows its applications java allows its applications to perform compilation on one hardware architecture and execution is on another hardware architecture because of this reason we can conclude java is like what there hardware architect hardware independent programming language uh, up to this point we understood sir clearly previously we have seen these points also no right no need to have too much discussion about it now portable we have not understand previously but we have to understand but concept is very very simple try to recognize it right sir uh, i will give one use case now try to understand it no i have a separate requirement what is my requirement actually understand it no 
as i said to you i want to take a new mobile phone let's assume it i have taken a new mobile phone as per your suggestion uh, maybe one plus 20 i have taken a high-end version i have taken good anyway i have taken that mobile phone i think so its cost is nearly uh, 56,000. assume it i have taken that new mobile phone but when i take 56,000 rupees phone my sim card and its mobile number should be very good or not moreover i am very much crazy about the fancy numbers so i want to take all sevens seven is my lucky number i want to take that mobile number all sevens then the cost of that all sevens is what there in airtel airtel the cost of that all sevens is nearly 10 lakhs yeah no problem i am very good sound party i don't have any problem i can put 10 lakhs rupees and i have taken that number good nice I kept my SIM code inside my OnePlus 20. That means OnePlus 20. Good. 5G supported. Everything is okay. Good. All right, sir. One day after I played with that mobile phone, new mobile phone with my number at my home. I have taken totally one day holiday for all my classes there. I checked my mobile phone. Each and every corner I checked it. Good. I satisfied. Next day, what happened when I uh, take these classes now? I brought my mobile phone to this classroom. But already you know, recognize my point here. All sevens number I have taken from Airtel. All sevens number I have taken from Airtel. Nearly 10 lakhs I put for it. So one day I have played with my mobile phone. Everything I got there and I satisfied with that. Then after the next day I am taking these classes. I brought my mobile phone into this classroom. Inside this classroom, I identified no message is coming. No WhatsApp is coming. And no call is coming. In general, when I got my calls there, I don't want to lift inside the class now. After completion of the class, I will check any calls are coming or not. But when I kept my when I kept my mobile phone inside this classroom, no, I didn't have even a single call. I feel wonder by seeing that. Every day in a single one and a half hour class, nearly 10 to 15 number of calls I used to get. But no call is coming on that day. Then after that, I have a doubt. I checked it. Airtel, 4 sevens number I have taken, 10 lakhs rupees I put for it. I checked this, what is the status of this inside my class now? When I identified, when I came to my class, when I absorbed the signal level of that Airtel inside my class now, it's like only one point I got. Only one point signal. Hmm, then what I have to do? Is there any problem with my mobile phone? It's not problem with my mobile phone. Where is the problem with, uh, where is the problem actually? With the Airtel account, with the Airtel SIM card only is a problem. Am I right or not? Airtel signals are not good inside my class. Then parallelly I identified whose signals are very good inside my class now. I, I got the information. Geo phone signals are very good. Geo connection. Geo signals are very good. But what happened there? What I have done there? I taken that all sevens from Airtel. But when I came to my class there, I identified no signal is available for Airtel. But geo signals are very good. I identified that. So what I have to do with the four all sevens numbers with Airtel account? Is there any chance? But I don't want to lose this number. I don't want to lose this number. Nearly I put 10 lakhs. Even if I ask them, I will return this number to you. Can you return 10 lakhs? No, nobody will accept it. If you want to give, if I purchase this number to somebody else, no, they may give only 10,000 or 15,000 only. But I put nearly 10 lakhs. Moreover, I don't want to lose that number. I want to use the same number. But Airtel account is not giving proper signals to me. So what I have to do? Yes. What you are saying? Porting the number, right? Porting, number porting, we have to follow, right? Our topic is what? Think of it. The same thing is going on in Java. Okay, I'll give more clearly. Number porting, we are able to do. I will send a request to the Airtel people. I don't want to use your services at my home. My signals are very less. Of course, they may take one week of time. Meanwhile, they will check it. The reason is proper or not. They will check the signal level in this particular location. If they identify really it's a less signal. If they are providing support, then okay, I will get that support. But they are unable to provide support for this. Then they are accepting that request. Then after that, then immediately what I have to do, I have to send another request to Geo people. I like very much about your services. No, I want to have your connection. But number is same. I don't want to lose this number. So there I need to go for porting, number porting. I can switch my account from Airtel to Geo or not? 
I can switch my number from Airtel to Jio or not. Similarly, when I prepare my Java program, when I execute my Java program on Windows operating system, where it is not running properly, some problems are available. Windows operating system is not supporting some of the features of Java. Example I'm telling you. Of course, nowadays Windows operating system is okay, but server side programming is still it is doubtful. Anyway, whatever the Java program I prepared, for my Java program, Windows is not giving 100% support. So I want to switch my Java program from Windows operating system to Linux operating system. Possible or not possible? I want to switch my program execution from Windows operating system to Linux operating system. The program is porting from one operating system to another operating system. Possible or not possible? As possible, Java is what there? Platform independent programming language. Similarly, I have taken some Intel processor I am taking now. That Intel processor is not supporting some of the execution in my program. That the present processor is not, is not supporting for my program. So can I run my same Java program in another processor? In another hardware system? Can I execute my Java program in another hardware system? Yes, it is possible. Am I right or not? Java is what there? Architectural neutral programming language. So conclusion is what we can switch your java program from one operating system and one hardware system to another operating system and another hardware system in order to execute our program successfully then it is it is possible to poach it is possible to switch from one operating system and one hardware system to another operating system and another hardware system so this feature this exert this feature is called as like what there portable programming language this feature is nothing but what there? Portable programming language. Java is a portable programming language. Why? Because why? Because we can switch Java applications execution. We can switch Java applications execution from one operating system to one operating system and one hardware system to another operating system and another hardware system hardware system in a simple way in a simplified manner okay fine on a hardware system that's enough okay on a hardware system so because of this reason we can conclude java is what there a portable programming language right sir <clears throat> then what next one you know next one is very very simple for us number of times we understood this point here what is that next feature here no dynamic programming language huh. now tell me guys all of you now tell me what is dynamic programming language what exactly the meaning of dynamic programming language let's let's understand this now all of you let's understand this now if any programming language allows its applications to provide memory allocation for the primitive data at runtime if any programming language allows its uh, applications to assign memory for the primitive data at the runtime, then that programming language is called as what? Dynamic programming language. Example is what? Java. Then I'm telling you clearly, Java is Java is a dynamic programming language. Java is what there? A dynamic programming language. Why? Because java allows its applications to provide memory allocation for the primitive data at runtime java is a dynamic programming language why because java allows its applications to provide memory allocation for the primitive data at runtime so because of this reason java is what there a dynamic programming language huh. Right, sir. Then what is the next feature here? Nothing to discuss more than this about this portable. That's okay. Now, what is the next one here? Now tell me. Robust programming language. Right, sir. This is one of the important feature. Maximum, if any interviewer wants to ask the questions from this total list, no, he may select that robust. Of course, already how Java is platform independent, how C and C plus platform dependent. I completed the topics there. In a differences, no, there that questions are covered. 
but in the remaining part of the java features you no know, if interviewer wants to ask any question only one question is able to ask that question would be how java is a robust programming language somewhat important try to understand it so in the next 5 to 10 minutes of time topic is very very important try to put more consonation i'll explain to you clearly try to understand it so robust programming language now before this what i am telling to you clearly before the java java is whether robust programming language or not before this what i am asking to you when a programming language is robust programming language when it is possible to say a programming language is a robust programming language i want to know that observe carefully answer is very very simple if any programming language if any programming language is very good at memory management system and is very good at exception handling mechanisms then that programming language is a robust programming language very simple if any programming language is very good at memory management system and exception handling then that programming language is a robust programming language right sir how can you say how can you say java is a robust programming language how can you decide java is a robust programming language the answer is very simple java is a robust programming language why because java has very good memory management system and java has very good exception handling mechanisms how sir how can you say that how can you say java has very good memory management system yes i can confirm java has very good memory management system in the form of heap memory management system java has very good memory management system in the form of heap memory management system what is this heap memory management system actually what exactly this heap memory management system it is a dynamic memory management system heap memory management system is what a dynamic memory management system it allocates and deallocates memory for the objects at run time it allocates and deallocates memory for the objects at run time memory allocation is going on at run time memory deallocation is going on at run time as per the jvm requirement as per the application requirement so if you require memory memory will be allocated if you don't require memory memory will be deallocated that both the flexibilities are available with the heap memory management system that's why java is using this heap memory management system due to that reason we can conclude java had very good memory management system so that is totally in the form of heap memory management system heap memory management system is a dynamic memory management system which allocates and deallocates memory for the objects at a run time guys all of you are getting my point or not this is exactly the meaning of good memory management system inside the java leave this point here. second point is what there very good exception handling mechanisms so before understanding exception handling mechanisms first we will understand what is an exception then how java has very good exception handling mechanisms later on we can understand but now what is this exception simple sir very simple definition in general we used to get errors at compilation time am i right or not when we compile the program then only we are able to get errors am i right or not but what i am telling to you exception is a runtime error exception is what runtime error causes abnormal termination to the application come again what is this exception exception is a runtime error causes abnormal termination to the application i'll give some example say for example you are coming to this class two cases i'm telling to you understand this one you want to come for this class today timing is 10 o'clock 10 to 11 that is a class timing you want to attend this class so now the time is 9 o'clock or maybe the time is 8:30 for example 8:30 onwards you have to get ready to come for the class by 10 o'clock so now the time is 8:30 you are trying to ready 
to move for the class no but you are not at ready just we want to ready to move that means you are trying to ready whenever you are trying to ready just immediately got a message from durga shop then due to, due to the trainer's problem there the trainer don't want to come for the class so today no class for you today class has been cancelled please attend the class on tomorrow we received a message from durga shop but don't expect like this in my classes max if i give commitment up to that i will take the sessions reality i'm telling that but example point of view you can understand if you receive any message from durga shop don't come for the class today come for the class on tomorrow trainer has his personal work so you don't want to take the session and don't come for this class today class has been cancelled tomorrow attend for the class if you get this message now what you will do you will you come to durga shop after receiving that message even will you come to durga shop if you come to durga shop even after receiving message no you may come to the durga shop because of some other reason not for the sake of class so it is very clear that at your home it was decided no class is going on today don't come for the class maybe for example there is a problem with the projector there is a problem with the projector no classroom is adjusted projector is not working no class today that is decided at your home so when when it is decided at your home you will not come to the class your home is nothing but compilation at compilation time itself it is decided so class is not going to be happen program is not going to be executed damn sure leave it case number 2 i am telling this is nothing but compilation error case number 1 is a compilation error where at your home you decided there is a problem at our class there so no class today that means in the same way when we compile our program the compile is giving information there is a problem in our program it will not be executed first correct this problem this is compilation leave it case number 2 10 o'clock your class is going on at 8:30 you start to ready you are ready to prepare yourself to come for the class you started your preparation now the time is 9 o'clock okay got ready just you are ready to move you came to the bus stop you are taking bus and uh, nearly you had nearly maybe you have taken bike nearly after 45 minutes of journey you came to the maitrivanam building then you came inside the class you started you sat there inside the class myself as i completed previous class now i went outside within 5 to 10 minutes of time i came back and i started my class okay everything is good projector and my system and everything is good class i started one and a four of time is a class duration nearly i took 45 minutes of class i took there 45 minutes of class i took there all of sudden power failure is happened projector is not working and my system is also not working then what we have to do we are being terminated from class or not we are going to be terminated from our class or not the class is terminated in the middle or not due to watch due to the power failure due to the projector is not working and due to my system is not working when power is available then only my system and projector both will work and even mic also the projector is not available if my system is not available when mic is not available not possible for me to connect the class but i am ready to take the class you are ready to listen the class but unexpected problem is coming due to that unexpected problem i am unable to continue the class i might be terminating the class now tell me at what time the situation was happened at your home or when you come to the class when you start your class that means at compilation time or at run time run time only you are attending this class now class is going on smoothly at the time only that some unexpected problem is coming due to that unexpected problem our class is being terminated so what is the meaning of this at run time there is a problem now tell me when this problem is happened for me what i have to do is it possible for me to continue the class not possible definitely i have to terminate the class only that is nothing but abnormal termination even the topic is in middle not completing even the topic the point is in middle half of the point i typed remaining half of the point i have not typed understand it clearly so the point and the topic is in middle all of sudden in the middle my class was terminated suspended abnormal termination or not if i terminate the class at the end of the session at 11:30 if i terminate the session then it will be like what there abnormal termination sorry smooth termination if i terminate my class at the end of the session at 11:30 if i close my session 
it will be smooth the termination but in the middle of the session if the middle of the class middle of the topic if i terminate the class in the middle of the duration if i terminate the class this is called as abnormal termination in this abnormal this abnormal termination is happened due to some unexpected event in our class in the middle of the class that unexpected event like power failure project not working system not working mic not working that power failure system is not working project is not working mic is not working that that event that unexpected event is called as an exception that is called as runtime error that is called as what an exception now tell me finally exception is a runtime error or not exception is what there runtime error causes abnormal termination to our session or not that the unexpected event causes abnormal termination is called as an exception unexpected event causes abnormal termination of our application is called as what an exception so simply speaking exception is an error at runtime causes abnormal termination to the application okay fine ah uh, now tell me guys in a durga soft durga soft is an organization durga soft is an organization in a durga soft we are conducting the classes in the middle of the class power failure was happened class was terminated in the middle one day okay second day also the same situation is repeated okay you are very good kind hearted you excused for it second day also third day also the same problem was happened third day also you excused you are very good fourth day no patience level is uh, exhausted uh, then you will go for like what the next level fourth day you may think badly and with some words you may leave from the class by seeing my face at least fifth day also the same thing was happened one week after the same thing was happened then immediately you may feel bad about not about me you may feel bad about durga soft or not all right durga soft classes are going on okay trainers are coming and students are coming everything is okay but the power failure is going on due to the reason class are not happening so durga soft is not handling the situation same situation is coming repeatedly same situation is coming repeatedly durga soft is not handling the situation so durga soft is not good when you feel good about durga soft no in this particular scenario when you may feel good about durga soft in this particular scenario even though power failure is happened if classes are going on without termination you may feel good about durga soft and so my point here when power fail even though power failure is happened but still no disturbance to our class even though power failure was happened my project is running my system is running my mic is running everything is going on smooth i am continuing the class the class are happened perfectly successfully without having even a single minute delay but still power failure is happened now you feel good about durga soft am i right or not uh, then how durga soft has to handle the situation it has to handle that situation or not what is that handling of that situation no it is very clear when a power failure is coming at durga soft immediately immediately automatically that a power backup system has to be started or not so we have to maintain our power backup system when power failure is happen within nanoseconds my power backup system has to be started it should not give switch off mode for my projector it should not give switch off mode my my computer and mic should not be switched off immediately power supply has to be restarted or not in that way i have to maintain one power backup system if i maintain that power backup system that situation is handled or not even though really power failure is happened but my class are going to be continued no chances to terminate my class my class are going to be continued now you feel good about the durga soft am i right or not so here yeah, durga soft is handle the situation properly this handling is called as exactly exception handling this handling is called as what no exception handling maintaining power backup system automatically starting this power backup system when power is failed if it is a scenario at durga soft durga soft is handling that exceptions properly similarly in java applications whenever we are getting some unexpected events like your operating system is crashed or maybe some unexpected event due to that unexpected events our programs are terminated in the middle our program execution is terminated in the middle that is an exception but even though we are getting an exception 
being the developer as we are using the java programming language we should not terminate our program we should not make our program to terminate we have to catch that situation we have to handle the situation and you have to provide a smooth termination to our application don't provide abnormal terminate to termination to our application we have to make our program to terminate the program at the end of the program only not in the middle of the program in that way we have to handle that situation the way to handle that situation is called as exception handling in java that handling is nothing but what exception handling in java java has very good exception handling mechanisms even though we are getting some unexpected events java has very good exception handling mechanisms to handle that situations in order to provide smooth termination not to provide abnormal termination to avoid abnormal termination java has very good exception handling mechanisms by applying this uh, very good exception handling mechanisms java applications will be terminated smoothly not abnormally that's why java has very good exception handling mechanisms now tell me by understanding both a very good memory management system and very good exception handling mechanisms by understanding this both can we conclude java is a robust programming language can i say java is a robust programming language exactly java is what a robust programming language because of these two reasons guys all of you are getting clarity if any interviewer is asking question to you tell me how java is a robust programming language your answer should be what java is very good at memory management systems and exception handling mechanisms how java is very good at memory management system it able to provide it it able to have heap memory management system what is this heap memory management system it's a dynamic memory management system what is the advantage of it it allocates and deallocates memory for the objects at runtime as per the application requirement so it will not waste is our memory unnecessary it will not allow the memory it will create the memory on requirement it will destroy the memory on requirement second one java has very good exception handling mechanisms due to some unexpected events some abnormal terminations are going to be happen to our application so even though we are getting unexpected events but java has provided some solution for avoiding abnormal terminations even in unexpected events and to provide so smooth termination java had a set of technology a set of approaches a set of mechanisms that mechanisms are called as what their exception handling mechanisms and to provide this exception handling java has defined n number of n number of predefined classes for each and every exceptional situation is represented in a predefined class by using that classes only we can handle that exceptions even by using try catch finally exception classes and try catch finally these two things are available to handle any type of exception so with that java is able to provide solution for exception handling so by this we can conclude java is what there a robust programming language right so now let us go for this no java is a robust programming language why because two reasons can i set to you reason number 1 java has very good memory management system java has very good memory management system in the form of heap memory management system heap memory management system it is a dynamic memory management system it is a dynamic memory management system uh, then apart from this then what is the meaning of this dynamic memory management system it allocates it allocates memory it allocates memory it allocates and deallocates memory it allocates and deallocates memory for the objects at run time at run time as per the as per the application requirements as per the application requirement this is point number 1 next what is the another point here we have to understand there java has java has very good exception handling mechanisms so second reason is what java has very good exception handling mechanisms right sir how can you say java has very good exception handling mechanisms no why because java has defined 
Java has defined very good predefined library to define and handle to define and handle exceptions in order to provide smooth termination smooth termination of the to smooth termination to the applications so the dimensions to the applications and what next one there in order to smooth the dimension of the applications and in order to avoid abnormal termination to the application i think not required to give any information about what is smooth termination and what is abnormal termination smooth termination is what terminating the program at the end abnormal termination is what terminating the program in the middle terminate the program in the middle abnormal termination terminate the program at the end that is what there smooth termination no need to have any further discussion about these two points already we understood that okay leave this one kid guys once again i'm telling there this is important maybe interface mask only one question from this java features that would be like what the robust that we have given clearly has very good memory management system in the form of heap memory management system it's a dynamic memory management system which allocates and deallocates memory for the objects at runtime as per the requirement second one is java has very good exception handling mechanisms why because java has defined very good predefined library to handle and to catch and handle uh, to represent and handle all the exceptions which are coming in java applications due to these two reasons we can conclude java is very good at java is a robust programming language right next one is what next one you know distributed programming language i think you understood already this point here previously in the very first class anyway i'll explain one more time try to understand this by using java programming language we are able to prepare two types of applications one is stand alone applications another one is distributed applications one is a stand alone applications another one is what distributed application what is stand alone application and what is distributed application if it design and execute any application without using client server architecture without distributing application logic over multiple machines if it design and execute any application without using client server architecture without distributing application logic over multiple machines then that application is called as a stand alone application quite opposite of stand alone applications quite opposite of stand alone applications is a distributed applications what is the meaning of this distributed applications no observe carefully if it design and execute any application on the basis of client server architecture if it design and execute any application on the basis of client server architecture or by distributing application logic over multiple machines then that application that application is called as distributed application come again what is a distributed application if it design and execute any application on the basis of client server architecture or by distributing application logic over multiple machines then that application is called as is called as distributed application clear right sir to prepare this distributed applications to prepare this distributed applications java has provided a separate module j2ee module was provided to prepare this distributed application java has given a separate module separate part that is what there j2ee java to enterprise edition a separate edition was provided to prepare this distributed application so by this we can conclude java is what there a distributed programming language observe carefully java is a distributed programming language java is a distributed programming language why because how can you say like this why because to prepare distributed applications java has provided 
a separate addition in the form of j to e e separate addition in the form of j to e e by using this j to e e we can prepare distributed applications the applications which are designed on the base of client server architecture are called as what distributed applications yes sir all of you are getting clarity or not right sir people are sleeping sir please wake up almost all we are at the end of the session at least now we have to uh, pack up and we have to go outside of the class now still you are sleeping inside the class huh? are you expect any coffee or tea from durga soft no if it is in the middle of the class then at least i can provide that now it is almost all end of the session huh? but don't sleep inside the classes now why because the topics i am discussing with you very much interest if you sleep inside the class i may lose my interest without having interest then how it is possible to teach the content no simply i will cancel the class so this kind of problems will come abnormal terminations are going on huh? so don't give, give good environment for us so you have to if you are interested then my interest will be increased if you are not interested my increase will be reduced my interest will be reduced understand it no so of course at the end definitely i'll satisfy all of you i'll give much content then as per my response see i'm teaching the content continuously but if you are sleeping in the middle of the class you may lose the content but my flow is going and my topic is going to be completed but i don't like such kind of situations in my classes understand it so otherwise then if you need any entertainments in my classes no i'll play some movie clips also here if you require that but it is a time waste process i have almost 100 plus movies are available in my laptop i can take one movie i can play maybe all kind of movies are available huh but don't give such kind of scenario if i see any of you are sleeping inside the class no directly i'll stop my class i will take one bahubali movie part 1 and part 2 both the movies i will play inside the class so you can see that movie only only you are coming here to see the movies two to three days i will play the same movie within one and a half hour that movie may not be completed greatness of rajmouli right each part may be three to three and a half hour of movie right so minimum it will take three to four days of time right don't sleep inside the class otherwise you will see bahubali movie sure right sir anyway then this is the end of the session today so what i completed in today's session please uh, recollect all the concepts now today i started with the uh, java features how many features we completed as of now eight number of features can you list out what are the eight number of features now simple object oriented platform independent architectural neutral huh, portable dynamic robust distributed so these are the eight number of features we completed the many features are what secure multi threaded interpretive high performance so tomorrow we are going to discuss the remaining features after completion of these features on tomorrow tomorrow i will start a java programming format what is the minimum format of the java program then what exactly each and every part you are going to understand if i complete it then i will go for steps to prepare first java application then i'll go for what there steps to prepare first java application how to download java software how to install java software from that point onwards we are going to start our programming then everything we are going to understand don't worry for it okay i'll plan for it but before terminating our session please confirm to me guys what about our schedules what about our schedules and uh, tomorrow what is the timing for our class there 10 o'clock day after tomorrow what is the timing for our class 10 o'clock on sunday what is the timing there 10 o'clock on monday 8:30 to 10 we have to come for object orientation and 10:15 to 10:15 to 11:30 that we have to attend for same continuation of these classes there this 10 o'clock class is going and up to next 15 days of time but next monday onwards 8:30 to 10 o'clock we are going to attend until the end of the course okay this is a clear cut schedule for everybody try to plan for it okay thank you thanks a lot tomorrow we'll meet at 10 o'clock guys those who are in online <laughs> Yeah, paradigm in uh, Java and Kailas, I will discuss with you, don't worry. Uh, in object orientation, you will get that clarity. That means whoops and uh, uh, then what I'm the processor orientation and all these things are paradigms. So no need to worry for this. All right, sir. Yeah, distributed is nothing but just if you design any application with the clients and your architecture, then it is called as like what their distributed application. That's it, not more than that. Okay. Yeah. distributed application sudipa rajan 
distributed application in the sense if we use client server architecture to prepare our application then the application is a distributed application only where application logic will be distributed over multiple systems that's why it is called as distributed application as of now that information is sufficient okay yeah thank you thanks a lot meet on tomorrow at 10 o'clock yeah uh, vidra vidra just one minute you are asking something there mm, let me check it what do you ask over there yeah so adding 15 days till 11:30 is a bit difficult as i am working okay uh, then these are language fundamentals only with us then uh, otherwise what i am telling there up to this uh, 15 classes uh, i will give that video support to you we can take that video and then after that we can attend the classes at 8:30 continuously why because these are fundamentals only basic concepts only no need to worry for this yeah minimum 3 months of time it will take uh, navneeta ma'am duration of this course is uh, minimum 3 months of time it will take okay thank you thank you guys